International Space Station, the collateral victim of the Russian-Ukrainian war. The International Space Station, designed as a platform for astronomical and Earth observation. As a berth for small spacecraft, as a command post for operations in orbit around the Earth, has recently become a collateral victim of the Russian-Ukrainian war. As if the absurd conflict unleashed on February 24, 2022, by Russia, should affect everything people have thought, created, realized in time, with effort and for the good of humanity. Positioned at an altitude of 350 kilometers, the International Space Station descends, every day, a few tens of meters from its orbit and must be raised regularly. This is done with the help of the Russian Space Shuttle Progress, launched by a Soyuz rocket, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, the oldest and largest cosmodrome in the world, located in Kazakhstan. About 200 kilometers east of the Aral Sea, near the city Tyaratum. This year alone, so far, for example, it has taken four impulses to lift the ISS by 3.8 kilometers. The Progress ship also powers the Svesda service module, which can provide these impulses when Progress is not docked at the ISS. An official from the French Space Agency pointed out that if no maneuver is taken to lift the station, the ISS would reach a critical altitude of 278 kilometers in two years in which case the danger of an uncontrolled fall of the ISS would be real. International Space Station and threats from Russian officials. In the context of Russia's war in Ukraine and with the financial and technological sanctions imposed by the European Union and the United States. It seems that the Russian Federation's threats go in all directions, including the threat of abandoning the International Space Station, removing the Soyuz launcher from Kourou and banning it the launch of Western missions in Baikonur, and all this in the conditions in which the cosmonauts, of different nationalities, continue to collaborate without incident in the station. The most spectacular is the threat to debit the International Space Station issued several times by Dmitry Rogozin, Director General of Roscosmos, the Russian Space Agency. After Dmitry Rogozin announced his retirement from leading Roscosmos for 2024, he warned that if the ISS were to lack the strength of Russian progress ships and the Russian segment of the ISS, it would end up in an uncontrolled manner. In the atmosphere of the Earth, and the structure of over 400 tons could fall, also according to the head of Roscosmos on the Western countries. Described as war dogs, if you block cooperation with us, said Dmitry Rogozin, a close friend of Vladimir Putin's on Twitter. Who will save the ISS from an uncontrolled exit from orbit? Will it fall in the United States or in Europe? Under such circumstances, NASA is considering alternative solutions. Thus. It is planned that NASA will experiment, starting with April 2022, a solution to compensate for the boycott and Russian threats, with the Cygnus NG-17 module. Developed by Northrop Grumman and already launched on February 19. Moreover, Elon Musk responded to Rogozin's threats by stating that SpaceX could maintain the station's altitude. The Dragon capsule could thus dock at the ISS and, together with the Cygnus module, have the ability to provide the necessary traction, according to a researcher from Strategic Research. Other, worried decisions of the Russian space agency Roscosmos. On February 26, 2022, just two days after Russia invaded Ukraine, Roscosmos announced the suspension of flights of its space launcher from the port of Kourou, in French Guiana, and repatriated the 87 members of its technical staff present at the base. Without the Soyuz in Kourou, nearly a dozen non-Russian space missions are launched today, including satellites of the European navigation constellation Galileo. The French military imaging satellite CSO-3, the European Astronomical Telescope Euclid and Europe's Sentinel-1C radar satellite, and Copernicus Earth Observation Program. On March 4, 2022, a number of internet service providers were abruptly shut down in Baikonur. With Dmitry Rogozin ordering the cessation of all Russian rocket launches for the benefit of OneWeb in all its spaceports. As a result, one web teams left the Cosmodrome. 
In view of these unprecedented attacks, in a sector in which cooperation has been firmly maintained for 30 years, despite disputes, the profile of Dmitry Rogozin, who has been personally targeted by international sanctions since 2014, must be taken into account. Former leader of the Russian Nationalist Party Rodina, Rogozin was appointed Russian ambassador to NATO in 2008 before serving as vice president of the Russian government for nine years. In 2018, he was appointed head of Roscosmos, the Russian civil space agency. International Space Station, between the dream of knowing the cosmos and the pettiness of political games. After the fall of the USSR in December 1991, the International Space Station was restructured to take advantage of the know-how of Soviet engineers, developed during the 15 years of the Mir station, but also to prevent them from being taken over by hostile countries, United States, such as Iran. The International Space Station soon became a symbol of international cooperation and peace in the post-Cold War era. After 2014, i.e. after the Crimean crisis, NASA gained autonomy from the Russians, with the launch of the SpaceX spacecraft, which allowed the Americans to get rid of the Russian Soyuz capsules to serve the ISS. Also excluded from U.S. monthly projects, the Russians were gradually deprived of Western funding. At this moment, the return flight of the Soyuz spacecraft, scheduled for March 30th and which was to bring back, in the steppes of Kazakhstan, the American Mark Van Hay and the two Russian cosmonauts Anton Shkapelrov and Pyotr Dobrovest, is postponed until to us order. And Anton Shkapelrov, the current commander of the ISS, was born in Sevastopol, the largest port city on the Black Sea in Crimea. Part of the Republic of Crimea since 2014, under the authority of the Russian Federation, although since 1954 it had belonged to Ukraine. The yellow-blue suit of the Russian cosmonauts on the International Space Station, coincidence or solidarity with Ukraine. On Friday, March 18, 2022, three Russian astronauts arrived on the International Space Station. To everyone's surprise, their costumes were in the colors of the Ukrainian flag, yellow and blue. Coincidence or solidarity with Ukraine. While photographs of cosmonauts dressed in yellow and blue were circulating on the internet, the Russian space agency Roscosmos stated on its Telegram channel that sometimes yellow is just yellow, and that these colors are in fact those of the university from which the three cosmonauts come. Moscow Bauman State Technology. In addition, this flight attire was made six months ago, Roscomos pointed out. If cosmonauts hugged on the ISS when they met, Director Roscosmos also said that Russia would stop supplying launches to NASA and suggested that American astronauts use mature tails to enter orbit. Dot. NASA, the U.S. Space Agency's officials have also made sure that members of the ISS crew, informed of the events taking place on Earth, continue to work professionally, regardless of nationality. Geopolitical tensions, NASA added, have no reason to contaminate the International Space Station. International Space Station, a remarkable scientific project. The International Space Station is placed in low Earth orbit. At an altitude of about 330 to 420 meters, where there are remote sensing satellites, telecommunications satellites and several other space stations. The program was launched and is coordinated by NASA, and is being developed in conjunction with the Russian Space Agency, the European Space Agency, Japan and Canada. The project was launched in 1983 by US President Ronald Reagan. But very high costs delayed the construction of the station until 1998. In 1993, Russia was invited to participate in the project, given its experience with Mir Space Station. Launched into orbit in 1986 and voluntarily destroyed in 2001. The International Space Station is the largest artificial object placed in Earth orbit 110 meters long, 74 meters wide, 30 meters high. Weighing about 420 tons. The architecture of the station is heterogeneous, with a Russian orbital segment. 
which took over architectural elements of the Mir station and a much larger American orbital segment, designed according to standards defined by NASA. ISS includes about 15 pressurized modules, for scientific experiments, but also living space. Electricity is provided by solar panels, which cover 2,500 square meters. Initially, there were three people permanently on the station, and from 2021, seven, who stay here for three to six months. The $115 billion in operating costs of this station is considered by some to be enormous. Compared to the scientific results obtained, however, Others believe that the experience gained in the field of long stays in orbit and the symbolic importance of a permanent human presence in space are remarkable. How is a day on board the ISS? The time on board the ISS is UTC, Coordinated Universal Time or Coordinated Universal Time, a hybrid between the time of meridian zero, i.e. the time calculated by the apparent motion of the Sun called universal time, and the most accurately determined physical time, international atomic time. A day on board the station starts at 6 a.m., the station is inspected, then the crew eats breakfast. A conference is then held with the control center to schedule work to begin at 8.10 the day before. There will be a workout and work schedule until 1.05 p.m. The lunch break is one hour and then the work schedule until 19.30, with another exercise session interspersed. After dinner and a crew meeting, bedtime is 9.30 p.m. It is mainly about 10 hours a day, 5 on Saturdays, the rest, leisure activities. Rest and personal hygiene of astronauts. For rest, the International Space Station has two compartments in the Russian module and four in the American one. Each crew member has a sleeping bag attached to a wall. There he can listen to music or use a computer. Crew members may sleep and float in the cabin, in sleeping bags, but avoid doing so in order not to accidentally hit the equipment. Every 24 hours there are 16 periods of darkness and day, so in the period defined as night, the curtains close the windows. For personal hygiene, use wet wipes with soap in a package similar to toothpaste tubes. The crew has a shampoo that does not require rinsing and a toothpaste that can be swallowed. Toilets use a suction system with fans. Astronauts must attach themselves to the toilet bowl, which is equipped with a sealing system, and the waste is packed in bags stored in an aluminum container. When a container is full, it is transferred to the Progress cargo ship, which evacuates it. ISS Supply and Menu the station is supplied by the Americans and the Russians, but also by the other partners. With the help of supply ships, the food bags intended for each astronaut, for 15 days, are identified by a label of a certain color. In two of the ISS modules there are ovens for heating food and a dispenser with hot and cold water. The food includes freeze-dried preserves, obtained by vacuum sublimation of water after the freezing process, fresh vegetables and fruits in the days following the arrival of a supply ship. Liquids and soups packed in airtight bags and consumed through a straw, while solid foods they are consumed using, as on Earth, a fork and a knife. Each astronaut chooses his menu with the help of a nutritionist, a few months before leaving for space. Spicy food is preferred because, in the absence of gravity, odors no longer rise to the nose and the sense of taste largely disappears. The health of the astronauts. There are countless issues related to the health of astronauts that need to be addressed. Space sickness, which is comparable to motion sickness, caused by loss of orientation, affects some astronauts, but generally disappears after a few days. Then, weight loss, for several months, has serious physiological consequences, muscle atrophy, skeletal decalcification due to lack of stimulation by body weight of bone renewal mechanisms, redistribution of body fluids that can result in facial congestion, rising blood headache, reduced red blood cell production, slow heart rate, weakened immune system, weight loss, sleep disturbances. To reduce such harmful effects, astronauts should exercise regularly. Harmful radiation is another problem, sometimes long-term. Radiation shields and medicines can reduce these risks to an acceptable level, but much better solutions are needed.
According to the project, the International Space Station is expected to remain in space until 2028. All these absurd events will not extend into space. As if the leaders of the world were bored in our only home, Earth, the blue planet to which we owe our lives, aiming to destroy it, forgetting that, as the famous said astronomer Carl Sagan, we live on a speck of dust suspended in a ray of sunshine. Here is our home, here live those we love, whom we know, every saint or sinner in the history of our species has lived here.